Welcome to an unboxing and first look at a gaming grade notebook from ASUS. This is the, I can never remember their model number, so I'm just going to let you guys read it with me. This is the G. 53SXDH71. So this is a 15.6 inch gaming notebook. It's got 12 gigs of RAM. It's got a Core i7 quad core processor. It comes with a two year global warranty, including one year of accidental damage protection. It includes a bag, which I didn't know, but that would explain why the box is huge. So there's your Republic of Gamers backpack, which is actually not that bad. Cool, okay. There you go, you get one of those. And it also includes, look at this, a notebook inside as well. So you're getting definitely uh, some value for your money over here. And there's a very specific reason that I'm going to be having a look at this particular notebook. And that is because ASUS, and I don't, you know, don't want to criticize them or anything, but ASUS seems to feel in their gaming notebook line that a GTX 560M is good enough because they don't have anything with a GTX 570 or a GTX 580M. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking this 15 inch notebook and I'm going to be putting it head to head on my NCIX Tech Tips channel against a Core i5, so that's a dual core, whereas this one has a quad core, a Core i5, less RAM, but otherwise similarly specced configuration from one of their competitors with a GTX 580. So what we're going to find out by comparing these two notebooks is what do gamers really need in their gaming notebook? Do they need higher end CPUs and lots of RAM or do they just need the, the most beast graphics possible and then go from there? So we got some screws, an LCD cleaning cloth, a uh, notebook user manual, you probably got something in here about your warranty. There's also some Logitech thing. Yeah, notebook warranty there. You got your uh, drivers and whatnots on a disc. Oh, look at that. It comes with a G300. Well, where is it? There it is. Look at that. It comes with a Logitech G300 mouse, too. That is a beast package. So they've definitely got the, uh, the whole, like, package thing going on here. I mean, not that I'm saying that, you know... They are a, like a package, which could be perceived as good or bad, depending on like what you want. Um, so, notebooks. 15.6 inch ones. <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry. I'm calm down now. I'm calm now. Okay, we got... Uh, we got the power brick, which I'm going to do the obligatory iPhone comparison. I'll let, uh, let Slick have a look at that over there. Just don't get the package, package shot going. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we try to maintain a professional demeanor on this channel, you guys. We try. We fail. It's okay. There's your battery. Battery's kind of big, but it doesn't really matter because it fits in the notebook. And the notebook is uh, also kind of big, so... It is what it is. Okay, there's your cord. So now let's have a look at the notebook itself. I've already talked a fair bit about the specs, so I'm not going to really get into that too much more here. I'm going to show you the battery installation, which goes a little something like that. And the thing about ASUS's G-Series is they have a gorgeous rubberized finish that is A, fingerprint resistant, and B, also slightly more durable than your typical glossy notebook, which drives me crazy. Can't stand glossy notebooks because as soon as you take like fabric and go like this, it's like, oh, it's covered in micro scratches. Awesome. Um, so this is, this is outstanding. I love the finish on their G-Series notebooks. They've got a matte screen, which is also awesome because you see some of their competitors using glossy screens on their gaming notebooks. Ah, gamers won't know the difference. TN panel glossy screen. They'll think it's great. Um, you know what? No, I prefer a matte screen, especially for a high-end notebook like this. This is not a cheap notebook. This is well over a thousand dollars. So you definitely want to see things like the accidental damage protection, as well as matte screens, high-end specs, and overall good build quality. One thing that I would potentially criticize about it is it has a lot of depth. So you can see out here there's a lot of extra sort of baggage and that's where it's carrying the battery. So just bear that in mind guys, you're going to need a little bit of a bigger desk in order to accommodate one of these guys. But if you're buying a high-end gaming notebook, hopefully you knew that already. So you got your headphone port, your microphone port, you got USB 2, USB 3, HDMI VGA, Ethernet, and power in. 
This is a good mix. I still like to see VGA ports on notebooks. You've got a fairly average sized touchpad. Keys are soft and quiet, but uh, not too soft, okay? It's got a full number pad. Nothing stupid as far as the keyboard layout is concerned. We've got full size backspace, shifts, and enters, so nothing really bothersome over there. Um, let's go ahead. I think this is backlit too. Interesting. Yeah, illuminated chiclet keyboard. What else we got on here? Improved cooling stability and reduced noise. Ah, okay, we'll have a look at that at the back and the soft touch. I've talked about that already, but the palm rest is also using soft touch. Mentioned 12 gigs of RAM already. Uh, hmm. Okay, he says it's okay. Over here we've got a DVD drive as well as a couple more USB 2 ports. Hardware buttons for uh, your, your lights as well as your overclocking and something to do with Republic of Gamers in all likelihood based on the logo. Uh, here we go. Nope, that's not it. Oh, cool. So that's a level up. So that's an overclocking button. Very cool. You can just overclock your CPU using the one button. Okay, so on the back, these are for ventilation. So that is why we have so much space over here, I guess, so that they have room for the beast fans that they're going to be using to cool this bad boy. So, like I said, the comparison that's coming is going to be this versus the GTX 580 model, seeing how they stack up against each other. Do we need bigger CPUs? Do we need bigger GPUs? How much of a value is there to buying a notebook with a super powerful graphics card? How much more power does it consume when you're gaming? All this kind of stuff is going to be very interesting. So thank you for checking out my unboxing and first look at the G53. So we'll just call it the G53 because it's basically a shell. You can get it in a lot of different configurations. Don't forget to subscribe to Lions Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other innuendo.